Hello, my friends. Thank you for joining me for today's devotion. Let's spend a few moments with our Savior Jesus. I read from the book of Acts, starting with verse 29 and reading selected verses. And this is from Peter's Pentecost sermon. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the Lord heard this, or when the people heard this, rather, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, and for all whom the Lord will call. When Peter looked out over the crowd, Jerusalem was full of people because of the Holy Day, the Jewish festival of Pentecost. On this street corner alone, a thousand or more people had gathered, but Peter didn't see a crowd. He saw faces, the lines of which told thousands of stories. Some he knew, others he didn't. But he wanted to. He wanted to know them all, and he wanted them to know the one whom he knew. Jesus had appeared to Peter after he had been raised from the dead, after he had been crucified, after Peter had denied him. Jesus wasn't demissive of Peter. He wasn't going to liquidate Peter like a bad investment. He looked at Peter as though he could read every line on his face and delighted in all the stories they would tell. Jesus had told them, when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. So when Peter addressed this crowd, the very people responsible for the death of Jesus, he wasn't dismissive. He called them brothers. Our God loves community. That's part of his nature. God is three personal, knowable, relating beings who are so eternally united in nature and purpose that they are, in essence, one. The church devoted three centuries to working out this terminology to say what God is and what God isn't. The terms are important because they say that God is not the same thing, but someone. Someone who is not just holy, not just almighty, not just a mystery, but someone who comes with a community with a family, for brothers and sisters. Baptized into Jesus by the Spirit, we become his sons and daughters, sisters and brothers to each other. And this is God's desire for every person you meet. They're not bad investments he wants to liquidate. They are persons made in his likeness, knowable and relatable. Persons for whom Jesus died and rose, each called by God, each with a name, and an eternal story still being written. Won't you help them write it? We pray. Dear Father, help me to more deeply know you and the people you have created through the Holy Spirit and by your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, everyone, have a blessed day with our Lord, and I'll see you tomorrow.